all right hey guys um welcome back to my channel uh this is going to be the long-awaited um long-awaited vicky vibes that everybody keeps asking for because apparently you guys like them a lot um first off this is low-key another hair update uh last one i did was in july and or wait was that august that was august yeah that was august um last one i did was in august so my hair has grown about what two inches since then last time you saw me my hair was up about here about there now it's a little bit longer so full bob 2018 here we come like i've said before not really intentionally growing my hair out it's kind of just doing its thing and i mean the results are pretty much positive for the most part um so yeah i mean i don't i don't really have like an end goal or um i don't really have like a plan mapped out for my hair i just kind of let it do what it wants to do so this is this shirt is so raggedy i just put on something to put this to do this video i really didn't want to wear clothes but i mean i kind of have to right if you guys follow me on twitter um i usually have something decent to say on twitter I mean, I'm not like a psychologist or anything, but I do, you know, um, deal with people a lot. Um, and that's not saying that I know everything and that I've figured everything out, because it's definitely not that means I'm growing and I'm learning as I grow up. Um, I cannot breathe to save my life. You know, I'm just learning from people and observations and being a preacher's kid, you learn a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like we see a lot go on and we learn a lot from people and when I say that I speak from experience, my experiences may not be my personal experience, but they may be an experience that I've experienced just by experiencing other people's experiences. And you know how you're gonna get me a birthday gift at my birthday party for a birthday gift. <laughs> On my mind lately, I've been talking about um, basically your power, taking your power back, mainly because I just see so much. Um, <laughs> I just about to twist it, let's just twist it. I've been seeing a lot of people who, you know, are talking about forgiveness and forgiving others and stuff. And a lot of people on Twitter are talking about how they don't forgive people. And it had just been heavy on my heart to talk about it just because any issue that you have with anything or anybody in life, you have power over it. And I always feel like people don't give themselves enough credit as to where, where they forget burning this I don't even know why I tried I feel like people give away a lot of their power to their problems and other people um because they think that those problems and those people are the reason for why their life is messed up and it's like well if this didn't happen then this wouldn't have happened or if this person didn't do this to me then I wouldn't be like this or if I had this, then I wouldn't have to struggle with this. Or, you know, if I was at this place in my life, I would be happier. If I had this problem fixed, then I would be happier. And it's like, y'all are giving too much power to things that don't really have power over you. Because nothing and no one can have power over you unless you let it. So, to my understanding, it's like anything that is affecting you negatively, it's not really that thing's fault. It's your fault for letting it affect you i see a lot of people who let people or things take power over them by not assuming power over it does that make sense i see a lot of people on twitter who say oh um i don't forgive i just move on because you don't have to forgive somebody if they hurt you that's their fault and they don't you don't have to forgive them well regardless of who's at fault in the situation you should always forgive everyone when you don't forgive people you you give them power over your emotions and your feelings basically you're saying that my feelings are so strong no matter if they apologize or not i cannot forgive them because i feel so strongly so basically you're saying that your feelings take precedence over everything to me that's unstable because you can feel a certain way about something and you can be angry, you can be sad, you can be upset. But if that feeling is bigger than anything, that means that your actions are going to be aligned with your feelings. 
nobody has any idea how to deal with a person like that who's run by their feelings you know what i'm saying and that's why i feel like we have so many people who have horrible relationship skills horrible communication skills horrible just people skills because they allow their feelings to determine how they're going to treat people and your your feelings are like the most unstable thing about you like <laughs> your emotions are the most unstable thing about you they're like the most unreliable just always changing unpredictable your feelings are not your friend like you think they're your friend but they're really not because your feelings will have you thinking some crazy messed up stuff like on the one hand your feelings do matter because they affect your mood and how productive you are but at the same time you can't be run by your feelings then you'd never get anything done you'd never have a healthy relationship you you'd never like sometimes you have to be smarter than how you feel your actions have to align with your better judgment and feelings don't always align with your better judgment sometimes your feelings are effed up for lack of a better word <laughs> only because they're limited feelings are limited they're limited to your perspective your, your feelings are based on your own comprehension and limited knowledge of everything in the world so how you feel about something doesn't necessarily guarantee that it's right because you could misunderstand something and be wrong and feel a way that wasn't even necessary because it's the what the the information that you understand is wrong to say that you can't forgive somebody because of how you feel well to me that's telling me that you're not using knowledge and wisdom to assess a situation and then on top of that how many times have you had to be forgiven for something that you did to somebody you need that same grace that other people do so what makes you think that you have the right how how are you perfect enough to ever say that somebody doesn't deserve forgiveness like everyone deserves grace everyone deserves forgiveness the other day i was watching the chris brown documentary and yo it had me really thinking like yeah we were all mad chris brown when he beat up rihanna but at the same time it's like you can't hold that over his head because regardless of if it was and it was a terrible thing that happened but regardless of how it happened and why it happened he's still a human being and there's still things that he goes through in his life he needs grace too Everybody needs that, that grace to say, okay, yeah, that was messed up. But if they learn from their mistakes and they grow into a better person, who's to say that they don't deserve that? And that's why I'm like, y'all can't just sit up here and say, well, I don't, for I don't forgive because, I mean, if they did something wrong to me, then they don't deserve to be forgiven. That's, that's not fair, you know? When you, when you forgive somebody, you're saying, this is not going to run me. This situation is done with, it's done so, it's over. And I don't, I'm not going to be emotionally affected and mentally affected by this situation anymore because I'm letting go of it. You cannot let go of something without forgiving. You're allowing that type of situation to forever have power over you when you don't forgive somebody for it. It will always be able to affect you and make you mad and that's forgiveness is the first step it's not the only step it's the first step to healing from something these steps are steps that you take because you want to take them and to me it's like people allow themselves to be so wrapped up in how they feel that they don't heal from things because they're not taking power or assuming power over the things that are causing them pain like you know i've dealt with stress and anxiety and depression before i've talked about that um you know i've never really gone into grave detail about it online because i don't feel like it's necessary for me to detail the truth is not in the details the first time i ever had anxious or fearful thoughts or depressed thoughts it wasn't that i had the thought that was the bad thing the bad thing was that i allowed myself to keep having those thoughts because i didn't change Instead of saying, this thing is not going to have power over me, all I have to do is put myself in a position to succeed and then I ha don't have to be fearful of anything. We only do what we know how to do and what we learn from other people. So a lot of our behaviors, behaviors are learned 
and they're like defense mechanisms but at the same time once you know the truth about something you have to like change and fix it and do better and not allow the same thing to affect you the same way the next time that's what growth and maturity is i'm using the nars sheer glow foundation y'all this foundation is bomb this is macau though and macau is like a whole like shade darker than me but i just love the way macau looks on me as opposed to using cadiz or tahoe because tahoe and cadiz are not my color there's nothing in between tahoe and macau so I have to use Macau and mix it with something else. Um, I don't have Tahoe in this foundation, but I'm definitely gonna go get it and just mix the two. But yeah, so like every anxious and depressed thought I've ever had is my fault. And I have to take ownership for that and take ownership for the role that my own mind plays in this situation. So like, however I feel, is it's it has to do with me. There's a catalyst and then there's an effect. How you let it affect you does it depend on the catalyst? It depends on you. Like I'm an overthinker. So because I overthink everything, I, I let, I don't, I don't change my situation. If I don't change my situation to where I get a better outcome, then I'm, I'm the one who's losing. It's my fault. So I can't say, well, my job stresses me out. Um, and so therefore, because I'm so stressed out, I'm depressed. You know, you can say, my job stresses me out, but I'm going to wake up every morning and pray or meditate, or I'm gonna wake up every morning and, you know, think about the good things that I have to be grateful for and, you know, love on my family and my kids, if you have kids, or love on my brothers and sisters or whoever, love on my friends, hang out with my friends and balance out some of that stress and do some stress relieving activities so that I don't stress out instead of laying in the bed every morning, complaining about how you don't wanna to go to work, complaining about why you hate your job, complaining and complaining and complaining, and then thinking yourself into an even deeper depression, and then getting on social media and seeing people do things that you really wanna do, but you can't do, cause you don't have the resources. We put ourselves in the position to fail. You cannot set yourself up for failure by starting your day off wrong. If you're not waking up every morning and focusing on positive things, doing things that motivate you, doing things that make you feel better, eating better, drinking water, minding your business, <laughs> exercising, whatever it is that you have to do to keep yourself in good health physically, mentally, and spiritually, and emotionally, then you're, you're the one who's messing up. And that's why I say like you have to take your power back because you can't win unless you want to win and you can't win unless you set yourself up to win by changing your perspective, changing your mindset and doing the necessary things that you need to do that you know you need to do to make your world a better place. And then guess what? When your world's a better place, then everybody around you can feel that and then you can make the world a better place by being an example. And that's really what it's all about, right? Life ain't about you. So girl, get up off of your, I was going to say footstool, but it's not the right word. Soapbox, is it soapbox? Get up off your booty and stop, you know, complaining about the world around you and who did what to you and why this sucks and this sucks and why you don't have this and that, you know, and actually make positive changes to your everyday schedule, to your everyday life that can uplift and encourage you in a way that will allow you to think straight so that the next time a situation arises that frustrates you or makes you angry or causes you to not want to forgive somebody, you will have the full capacity to forgive them and move on without a scratch or a blemish. You want to know why? Because you have power. You have power over how that situation made you feel. You have power over yourself and you know that you're bigger than your feelings and that you have control over how your feelings affect you. And once you learn how to how to harness those things and balance those things, then you can truly be a happy person. Hold on, my food just, just, I smell it. It's in the oven. It's time to take it out. Okay, I had to make sure my food didn't burn. I'm trying to, I'm trying this new thing where I film and eat. Look at me, y'all. Trying to be productive and healthy at the same time. You go, Vicky. Anyway, but yeah, that's really what's been on my heart is just like talking about getting your power back and take accountability for yourself and for your life because really as adults playing victim playing the blame game always being victimized and feeling like you're a victim to your circumstances you're a victim to your problems i just to me it's you're too old for that when you're when you're younger 
you can you can make excuses and say well this happened to me and I grew up like this and people bullied me and people did this to me people did that to me or you know this situation wasn't ideal I grew up poor and poverty or whatever but as an adult you don't have the privilege of blaming the blame putting the blame on anything else anymore because as an adult you have full responsibility for yourself and for your actions and there's too many resources out here that can help you with any of the problems that you have if you're watching this video you clearly you know have some type of privilege so <laughs> it's not like you're you're at a complete loss you know what i'm saying um because we all have some form of something to be grateful for and to push us and motivate us to do better and take ownership and responsibility for ourselves you know so it's just like to me to me you have no excuse for why you can't be better and change and grow up and, and learn um you know and that's what i tell myself all the time because i mean of course i'm not perfect you know i get in these ruts even just a couple like a month or two ago i was feeling depressed again um just like it was last year and i was like you're relapsing don't relapse like you know it's like you can't you can't let yourself think yourself into a negative space you know what I'm saying it's like it's a mind game I mean you know little demons be walking around talking in your ear trying to make you scared trying to scare you into thinking that it's something wrong with you boo ain't nothing wrong with you that's them devils you have power over them mm-hmm you do so all them little demons that be trying to talk to you and tell you that you ain't worth nothing is lying to you and they telling you to point the finger at other people and other things and say that this is the problem, this is the problem, this is the problem. And then telling you don't forgive. Just understand and know. You have power over everything. And if you're bigger than something, if you're bigger than a situation, it doesn't take precedence in your life. And you don't have to keep holding on to it and making it the issue. When you have complete power over something, you take ownership and responsibility. That's one thing that I've learned being a leader is that when you want power over something, over anything that you do in life, you have to be able to stand up and take ownership for it. It's okay if you don't get it right the first time. Try again, you know? Um, I mean, like, as an adult, you have a million things going on anyway. So it's like, while I'm talking about this, I'm thinking about a million different situations that I've personally been through where I've had to apply this kind of power talk so to speak but you know I feel like because my name means victorious so I'm always thinking of ways that I can be victorious over anything in my life you know what I'm saying and how I can always come off come out on top um because I'm that's that's what my name means I'm I'm victorious like I I can't be a victim that it just I just can't be like I can't be a victim to any circumstance or situation because my name means victory and I'm not allowed to I'm not allowed to be a victim. I can't. And I don't ever really want to have to rely on anybody or anything to make me happy or feel victorious. Anyway, I should feel that within myself because I know that this is how I was created. You know what I'm saying? Like if I was born to be victorious, then I should be able to have control over my own victory, right? You know, and even like as a Christian, as a Christian, we believe that, you know, we're victorious through Christ, but at the same time, you have to accept Christ to be victorious because if you're going to be victorious through anything, you have to accept it, right? So that's a decision within itself, a decision to believe in something, you know what I'm saying? So it's not like I just blindly believing that I'm victorious, like I actually have to actively use that mindset every single day. Like it ain't like I just wake up and I know that I'm victorious because I believe in the Bible and Jesus like no like it takes like some real faith to believe that kind of stuff like it ain't easy just believing stuff you know what I'm saying like it's an everyday thing like seriously and just like that just like how faith works it's like that's how self-esteem works that's how confidence works that's how motivation works that's how like persistence and consistency works it's not like you just do it one day and then it keeps going forever like no you have to like every single day wake up and do things that are gonna make you whatever you want to be so if you want to be consistent you literally well consistency is a it's a bad example because it's literally in the name of the word but like if you want to be patient you have to wake up every day and be patient and deal with things that are not going to make you patient things that are going to make you not want to be patient 
and like apply patience to it. It's like so annoying, but that's like how you get it though. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't just have something and not work for it. Like where they do that at? But I feel like as millennials, we feel like we're so entitled to getting what we want that if we just say it and talk about it, that we'll get it. But I mean, speaking stuff into existence works to a degree. You also have to put like work in and like put forth like effort. Sometimes you won't feel respected. Sometimes you won't feel like you were treated fairly, but guess what? Life ain't fair. And you gotta put in the hours and the work and even with taking your power back, it ain't like you just take it back and you have it forever. If you want power, if you want power over how you feel, you best believe stuff is gonna come and try to make you feel a certain way. The odds are always gonna be against you, especially when you're when you try to like do better and like focus on you and mind your business and drink your water and not sip tea. When you try to live a life like that, everything is gonna be like sips tea. Try to draw your attention and make you think negatively make you go back to that place you don't want to be in and it's like you have to choose i feel like people just like think that when they decide to be a better person or when they decide to follow a new regimen or when they decide to you know create a better lifestyle for themselves or change their perspective that once you decide that that ha that you're gonna do that that it automatically just kicks into gear and you don't have to like actually try like, nah, bruh, like, that's the beginning. It's gonna get harder from there. You're not just gonna wake up one day and say, mm, I wish I was patient, and then you have patience. Or you're not just gonna wake up one day and say, mm, I wish I was over this person. Like, ugh, I'm st that guy did me so wrong, and like, I wish I was over that situation. And you don't, you don't just wake up and you're over it, you know? Like, you actually have to, like, actively do things to get over it. And that means like changing your surroundings, changing your environment, changing the way you do things. It takes effort. Like you don't just wake up one morning and say, oh, I believe in God, now I'm a Christian. Um, I'm gonna go to church and read my Bible and then that's it. Now I'm like the perfect person, I'm a saint, I'm going to heaven. Like it's not that easy, like everything's gonna test you, you know? When I'm on um, Instagram Live and people are like, how do you deal with temptation when you're trying to be celibate or whatever? And I'm like, Girl, you better believe that if you decide, the moment you decide that you're not gonna do something, that's when everything around you is gonna make you wanna do it. So you have to like put forth real effort to actually say, I'm not gonna do it. And it ain't nothing and nobody that can make that happen. Like you actually have to consciously make a decision every single day and it's gonna suck. I feel like once we hit adulthood, like once, once you leave like childhood and you get into adulthood it it seems like things should have been easier but it's like not like you actually have to like every day make decisions that are hard but at the same time very necessary because if you want to be a good person and you want to have a healthy life you have to make these these hard decisions you know um but your ability to make them and assume power and seem powerful is what makes you a leader and that's how you are an example for other people and you help other people do the same thing and that's how my friends we make the world a better place the other day when i was tweeting about it i was just tweeting from my feelings you know and then like this sunday um my mother-in-law was preaching about forgiveness and taking power in that situation um and not lingering she's talking about lingering and not um, allowing yourself to get trapped in, in situations and how you feel about situations or whatever, not allowing yourself to get trapped in moments and living in the past. Um, and then Cameron showed me a post from his Facebook that he posted five years ago. It was talking about the exact same thing. And then I was having a conversation with Taylor on the phone about the exact same thing and with Gabby about the exact same thing. So it's like, I've been talking about this and hearing about this and reading about this and studying this it, for like days on end. So like now my brain is like fully filled with, take your power back, take it back. You have to be like He-Man. I have the power. <laughs> I'm so serious, like I'm joking, but I'm serious. Like I really want you guys to understand how much freaking power you have. And you give something power by talking about it. 
and bringing it up and talking about it over and over and over again. That's how you get something power, right? So in order to take it back, you just stop giving it power. Stop talking about it. Stop complaining about it. Stop drawing attention to it. And I know that's hard because when you're depressed, like you can't think about anything else but how depressed you are. Like when I deal with depression, it's like I wake up in the morning and I think about how depressed I am. And then I go online and I'm scrolling and I'm scrolling and I'm scrolling and it's making me more depressed. And then I get up and then I don't want to eat anything. So then I feel terrible. So then I'm even more depressed about how I feel. And my feelings just overwhelm me. You, it's because you overthink, you stay in your own head, you don't let anyone help you, you don't let anyone in, and if you don't have people you can confide in or talk to about it, then it really sucks because you're stuck in your brain, you're trapped there. And then it's like, I was talking about that on Twitter too, about how you can be so stuck behind layers and layers and walls and walls and walls that you've put up to protect yourself that no one can help you you're just a destructicon like everything you do you're going to sabotage it because you're never going to be satisfied because no nothing and no one can make you satisfied because you're stuck in your brain with your own thoughts all you have to do is pull yourself out of the sunken place and tell yourself no this is not going to depress me like i'm gonna have power over this because i'm bigger than this i have more power than this i have more influence over this situation than it has over me earlier this year i was depressed about um, not, not feeling good enough because it's just not in me to do certain things and be a certain way. And because I don't want to be a certain way and do certain things a certain way to be a certain way and appear to be a certain way to other people because I hate feeling like I have to perform, you know, I hate the pressure of feeling like I have to do something to appease people because I don't like pleasing people. But, it, but because my YouTube is my job, this is like, my whole job is to please y'all because if you don't, if I don't please y'all, then I don't get likes, I don't get comments, I don't get views, I don't get sponsorships, I don't get money, I don't, I don't get anything, I don't get any satisfaction out of this unless I please y'all, right? But at the same time, I hate having to answer to people about what I like to do and, who, and me and who I am as a person. I have to be a certain way in order to succeed in this industry, but I don't want to be like that. So I was, it's like a battle and I'm always like trying to figure out how I can still be myself and still, you know, succeed. And so then I'm looking at other people getting online every morning, stressed about what I'm going to do next. So I get online to get inspiration, but instead of getting inspired, I'm getting upset, you know, so I'm like beating myself up basically. And instead of staying there in that place, depressed, I decided, no, mm -mm, I'm not going to let this depress me. You want to know why? Because, being successful does not rely on what people think about me. Being successful relies on how I think about myself and my own perception of what is successful. So I was like, shut up, Vicky. Get out of your underwear, put on some clothes, and do the work. And I kept saying that over and over again. I'm not going to let this have power over me. I'm going to have power over this. And here we are. I feel much better because I, I've been minding my business, taking care of myself, and doing what I know I can do. Nobody else, it wasn't the people that I was looking at that were making me feel that way, it was me. So I had to take ownership for that. And that's what taking your power back is all about. It's just like, you have to take ownership for how you feel and then say, okay, now I'm gonna do something to fix it. Instead of wallowing in the mud, I'm gonna do something to fix it. Because it's really not anybody else, it's me. My battery's dying. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. But other than that, I will see you guys in my next video. Let me go.